My name's Alan Hart and today I'm going to look at how does a hot water cylinder work. I've taken this hot water cylinder out on a job um, a few days ago and I thought what I'd do is I'd try and reconstruct it, put it all back together or put some of it back together, explain how it works. Also I've had quite a lot of questions on how to do a conversion, so how to cut the pipes and which pipes to use when you when you're going to put a combi boiler in so i'm going to try and cover that that as well i've got <laughs> i've got quite a, old, a lot a lot of the old pipe work so i've got the old air separator as well so i'm going to try and um, connect that in i'll cut it up as well so you can see how that works um yeah and i'll just try and explain as as, as best i can uh, i'll also we'll cut the cylinder up as well and i'll show you how that works inside this is what we would find in most domestic properties that's, that's got a hot water cylinder. This is an indirect cylinder. So again, I'll go through that as well and I'll show you, I'll show you that and how that works. Yeah, let's have a look now. So on this side here, where we've got the gate valve, this is the gate valve. Normally you would have a gate valve coming down from the pipework. It may come down from the loft. It may be that you've got a header tank just in your cylinder cupboard. Normally it would be in the loft. It would be the big, the bigger tank. So the bigger tank is the cold water storage tank and that feeds the hot water cylinder. And that would connect into the bottom of the cylinder. And that, that puts cold water into the cylinder. And then as you get hot water, the, you then use the top. That is the draw off. So that's what goes to your hot water taps on the top. If we have a look at the other side, I'll show you that now. If we look at this side, we've got two pipes. This one, this is the flow, and this is the return. And what happens is your heat source, so in our case the boiler, heat from the boiler comes into this pipe here. It goes round a coil inside this cylinder, transfers the heat from this pipe, into the cylinder water and then it comes back out the bottom colder and then that goes back to your hot water uh, goes back to your central heating boiler and then obviously pumps and pumps back to here so it's continuously heating this cylinder and then you'd have a control which would be there so that once this gets to temperature it would shut the boiler off and the pump off what I'll do now is I'm going to just cut a hole inside of this cylinder so you can see how that part of it works. So if you look now, this is your flow pipe and that goes into your cylinder, goes round a coil inside the cylinder and then it comes back out at the bottom. I don't know if you can see it down there. And that, that's your return. This is the central heating water, so that's what's in your central heating. You wouldn't want that to mix with the water that you drink, out, uh, water you bath, they have a bath in. So that's why it's separated. So this part here comes down through that pipe there, cold water in, and that's in bottom down over there somewhere. Can't really see that, but. So the cold water comes in, so this is the cold water in here, gets hot from this, but doesn't mix with it, and then it comes out of the top there. You might have an immersion heater as well, so that's just another heat source. And if we have a look inside, again, that's that there. I don't know if you can see this here, this. And what that does is, that works a little bit like an electric kettle. And that just transfers the heat from here into the water. So that's the immersion heater part of it. It could be that you've just got a pump that pumps around that coil directly from the boiler and it just puts heat into here. Normally you would have central heating as well. And what you need to do is, because you need to divert it to change it from one direction to another, You'd have your pump, so that's coming up from the boiler, that's the flow. This is sort of like the wrong way around, but let's turn that around, like that. 
So you'd have your pump that's pumping the heat from the boiler and then it comes to the diverter valve and then the diverter valve is putting the hot water or the flow in the direction that you require and that would be via a control such as a time clock. So you put your time clock onto hot water and if you have a look on the diverter valve there it's got um it's got an A and a B. So A B is always the main flow into the valve and then A A goes to your um central heating system and then B there B goes to your hot water cylinder. How I remember that or how we was taught is A for air and B for bath. Now that's just how I remember it. Um but yeah, so B on a diverter valve, B would always go to your hot water cylinder, so B for bath. Just remember that and, and you won't forget. Um, what I'll do now is I'll pipe some of this up and I'll show you how this works. We'll put the header tank, I'll show you how the header tank would work with it. Um, yeah, let's, let's have a look now. What I've done here, I've just put the flow in to start with, just so it's easier to understand. So if you imagine this is the flow pipe and that would be connected to the boiler, there should be no other pipes off that and that should go all the way up to your airing cupboard. And in this particular case, we've got an air separator there. And then if we have a look, we've got a cold tank. So this pipe here, that's a combined cold feed and expansion. And that's the cold water tank. Normally, we would have another pipe out of here. And that would, that would normally be the cold feed. And this would be the expansion. And this would go up and it'd go up above the header tank. Normally about 450. 450 millimeters. So then again, we've got as cold as flow coming up from the boiler there. So it's flow pipe up from the boiler, up, down, and this in this particular case it goes to the pump, and then the pump. Don't know if you can see this; it's a bit hard to see, but the pump goes back to A and B, and B goes to the coil so that's how you get your hot water and then A this one that would be your main flow to your heating so if you're going to put a, a new boiler in this airing cupboard this pipe that's going down here that would be feeding the radiators so that's the pipe you would need to remember which one you need at the moment this system would fill via this pipe here so this is cold water comes into the heat comes into this pipe here and then goes into your heating the air from the system from this system would also try and fight through the cold through, through the cold feed so it's a combined pipe that's a rough idea of how the flow part of the system would work in practice, if you was going to do this as a new installation, then that wouldn't comply like that. Um, so you'd have to look in your book and make sure that you do it correctly. Um, I would do it as OCP, so open vent cold feed pump, and you do them all within 150 of the pump. But again, you need to you need to have a look in the book for that. What I'll do now is we'll move on to the return, and I'll show you how the return works and. What you need to do if you're going to cut it out and put a new boiler in now this is the return and we've got a t there look and normally or it should be the last t should be from the cylinder to the boiler and that should be the last t so obviously if you're going to cut this out you'd cut it out um, so that you can connect your new boiler in and then this pipe, this part of it, would be the return from the central heating system. I hope that makes some sense. So depending on where you was going to have your boiler, you might have to you might have to get back to this T. Um, normally, it's just there in the airing cupboard below below the cylinder. So when you cut it all out, you'll find it. I hope you found that video useful if you've got any questions please ask them 
in the comments below. I'll add a link up there to um, central heating to another one that I've done, a central heating explained, and that tells you the different types of central heating systems. Up this side, I'll, I'll add subscribe. So if you'd like to subscribe, that'd be great. And then down there, I'll add some, just some random videos. Thanks for watching.